Hello Internet, in this video I'm going to be converting my own Orc Weird Boy. Let's get weird with it. So many of you may be aware of the Orc Weird Boy that Games Workshop offers, and it's an old metal model that I am personally just not that fond of. Now that I've said it's metal, I'm not sure. It could be resin, I don't really know. Either way, it's gone quite a long time without an update. So I thought I would try and convert my own. Now I've seen people just use the Auric Shaman from Age of Sigma, and it is pretty damn cool. But it does scream Age of Sigma, and it doesn't have any kind of sci-fi-ishness about it. So I thought, how about I use that as my base model, because I love the pose, I love the smoke and whatnot, and then I just add some 40k stuff to make it fit with my army. Full disclosure, I don't really do any kit bashing, so this was a bit of a new-ish experience for me. I think it turned out pretty well, but you can be the judge of that. And let's get straight into it. As I said previously, the base model for this Orc Weird Boy is going to be the Orc Warnock Shaman. Now I'm not going to do anything too heavy in terms of converting this model to fit 40k. It's mainly going to be just adding little bits here and there that are taken from the 40k universe. I'm not going to be cutting arms off or anything and replacing them just because I'm, uh, I'm not confident enough to do that without screwing it up. Going into this, I had a sort of image in my head of what I wanted the end result to look like. And the main thing was going to be replacing the skeleton on the staff for something more 40k-ish. Whether it be some orc insignia, the like metal things, that, the metal skull kind of things that go on. Uh, their killer cans and whatnot, or something like that, or maybe a skull from a different race or whatnot. I knew I wanted to replace that core skull with something more 40 k and the little skulls that hang from the guy's KP poncho thing, uh, I want to replace one of those with a Necron head because I think that would look pretty cool as well. As I know that I want the main pose to stay exactly the same, the first thing I'm going to do is glue the left arm to the main body basically just following the steps that you are given to build this model. Next up, it's time to get the bit box out. And I'm gonna consider a new head for this model, um, but when I started looking at how the original model was made, it was clear that I'd have to cut out quite a few bits and sand and smooth the area, maybe green stuff it or something in order to attach a head smoothly. So instead, I decided to go ahead and glue on the normal head but instead of having those horns that kind of drape over the top of the head, I'm going to use one of the Orc Boy ponytail kind of things, because who doesn't love a good hairpiece? Bullshit. Bullshit. Next up, I'm going to stick on the main skirt part of the model, and then I'll start to glue on the cloak thing, and throughout this whole process, I'm really taking care to get rid of any mould lines and little cutting snubs, or whatever you call it, the little bits of plastic that might remain on the model when you snip it off because it's not completely flush. Get rid of those and the mould lines. Really wanted it to be nice and smooth. Then it was time to pop on that ponytail. I decided I was going to final the bottom a little bit to make it a bit more flush and then it was simply a case of gluing it to the top of the guy's skull. Then I went ahead and did what I mentioned earlier and cut off one of the skulls on his cloak and just glued a neck one head in its place. You could, if you wanted to, be really finicky and use some fishing wire or something to go and attach some rope to it so it actually looks like it's tied on, but I am lazy and I don't really care that much, so it is kind of just floating there. We can assume that it's tied up inside of the head rather than outside. Next I went ahead and I glued together the smoke portion of the staff and started to consider what I was going to replace that skull with. After going through my bit box, I thought it would be excellent to use a Tyranid head for something like a Tyranifex or a Carnifex. After testing out the sizes and how well the mouth would actually fit round the staff, I landed on the idea of using a Tyranifex head. This was a fairly finicky process. I had to do various test fits to see which angle it would fit best at when placed on the staff. And then once I found that position, I had to cut the main head from the neck. And this is because the neck has a closed end, so it would actually kind of cut through the staff, and obviously we don't want that. So I thought I would cut off the neck 
and I wouldn't worry too much about leaving a jaggedy line around the main head because that kind of just makes it look like it has been cut from the dead creature. But it's too jagged, it doesn't look organic. Well that's fine, when it comes to actually painting the model, I'm going to apply a texture paint on that area to make it lumpy and a bit more gooey and then you can cover it in blood and stuff and it looks like flesh has been chopped up and we can totally get over this messy, choppy, slicey job. Now I've had this idea for a while that I'm really quite fond of, of having my Orcs be Tyranid Hunters because you always end up with so many bits when you're building Tyranids, I thought it'd be good to be able to start integrating those into my models. Like with my uh, War Trike, that's what it's called, the HQ unit for the Speed Freaks. On that base it's fighting a, well not fighting, it's blasting the face off of a Tyranid. Hormagont. So I'm already starting to incorporate them into my bases and whatnot. And mainly I want to start converting some of the Beast Snagger models. In terms of the Squig models, I still haven't got the Squigger sword. Replacing the sword that the War Boss holds with a sword that belongs to the Swarm Lord, because then it looks like he's killed someone and he's got the massive Tyranid sword rather than this janky metal one. Uh, I thought that would be quite a nice subtle touch. But yes, I digress. Anyway, let's get back to the build. There was still a little issue with fitting the head around the staff and I just needed to clip off a couple of the teeth, which is fine. Obviously teeth get damaged in battle, I suppose. Um, and then it just clipped around the staff perfectly. And there was one other thing that I did after I finished filming that I just forgot about. The Orc Shaman has a necklace here with a skull in the middle that has a couple horns. I just snipped that off and the space that was left there was perfect for a Space Moon helmet. So I went and popped that in and I'm obviously going to paint it as a Blood Angel because that's what my friend plays and any does Space Moon or bases have to be Blood Angels for that reason. So, what does it look like when painted? Well, it's time for the Grand Reveal. I hope you like this Orc Weird Boy conversion as much as I do. I'm very happy with it, and I'm glad that he's going to be de jumping my models across the board going forwards. If you'd like to see more videos like this, then make sure to let me know in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up, and if you want to see any more videos from me, check out the channel or subscribe to see future videos. There are various links in the description down below, different ways to support me and whatnot. Um, but other than that, thank you for watching. And I'll see you later. Gold in my pocket, I'm up away, yeah, just like a rocket.